Hello, everyone. Uh, we are a group of students of Neuronauts Volongo, and uh, we decided to go with. <laughs> um, okay, so how uh, I was saying previously, our group decided to study how do we behave under stress. But stress is something that all of us have felt in one point of our lives or another. And sometimes it might confuse us what it is, what effects it has on us, and what are the best strategies to cope with it. Uh, but we want to explain it and explore what really is stress. And after understanding that, we want to know what are coping mechanisms that might be term, a term not everyone has listened to before. And we also conducted a practical experiment to help uh, and support our data and our hypothesis. So first of all, stress is putting it simply a physical and psychological reaction of our bodies to situa situations that seem unmanageable or that create like a shock to us because they are new or they're frightening. And in a way, stress is beneficial to us. It has been with humans ever since uh, we, <laughs> we exist and it, it was meant to help us survive. But nowadays, stress can reach points that it is not healthy and sometimes it gets really hard to deal with it. And we want to go further on that topic too. So now that we understand what stress is, we want to know how the cycle of stress works. And it's quite simple and it explains what stress does to us. First of all, that is, there needs to be a stressor that it's kind of an intuitive word, but it's the cause of stress. And it might vary a lot from person to person and it does not need to look the same for everyone. Then there is our reaction to that stressor that might be physical, psychological, or both. And then where and there would approach to a um, Portuguese uh, expression that would be uh, <laughs> because uh, over time dealing with stress, uh, we get worn out and we get burned out and we are more sensitive, that's what even sensitivity is referring to, to the other stressors or even the same stressor. And this whole cycle continues. And if it keeps going for long enough, we might get like seriously burned out. So this is the stress cycle. And one thing that are that is really important are coping mechanisms that um, are ways we find to deal with stress. They also, like stressors, they do not look the same for everyone. And they are different from defense mechanisms because these, these ones are voluntary and they, we, we have initiative to go for them. Um, and they, they might be listening to music, they might be reading, they might be meeting a friend and talking about our problems. We are also very different. And we also wanted to study whether it varied from adults that we describe as people over 25 or young adults and teenagers that would be people under 25 or 25. So our study questions would be how does stress make us feel like and all of that, but our actual questions we wanted to follow, um, uh, oh, conduct our study to answer were what are the main symptoms when we get stressed? Uh, and what are the most common, common coping mechanisms for stress and if it varies from the, these two group pages I just described and also how does stress, how does stress affect our capability to do a specific task. So. Um, so to answer these questions, we created an online survey on Google Forms so it would be accessible to everyone. And we divided all the people into two groups. The first group was uh, the people under 25, which we define as the teens and young adults. And the second group, which was the people over 25, which we define as the adults. So the main goal of our online survey was to understand the influence of stress in people's behaviors. Um, and so we published the form on our social media so we could reach as many people as possible. 
So, and surprisingly, we, in three days, we received a total of 232 answers, which means a great amount of data to analyze. Um, and uh, here uh, you have some of the questions that we use on our online survey. How often do you feel stressed? When stressed, my mind experience. And then we had multiple options that people could choose. The same for when stressed, my body experience and so on. So uh, moving on in our online sur survey, we asked, as uh, I showed you before, so which symptoms people usually felt when they were stressed and how intense they were. We analyzed the physical symptoms, which were uh, the increase uh, in heartbeat rates, struggle breathing, trouble sleeping, tiredness or exhaustion, indigestion or stomach ache, loss of appetite, gain of appetite, headaches normal or excessive sweating. However, we realized that in some of these, there had no significant, significant differences between the two age groups, as you can see in some of these graphs. And therefore we only will talk about the ones that we thought were more relevant. Uh, so, uh, firstly, we we will analyze the increase in heartbeat rate, which uh, basically consists in the number of times that the heart beats in a minute. And as you can see, uh, many people do relate to this symptom, since more than 80% feel that this is the increase in their heart rate. Um, and uh, now, if we look closely, we can observe that it is more frequent to the people under 25, corresponding to about 40% uh, of the answers of this age group. And on the other hand, people over 25 uh, say that only sometimes they feel this increase. So on the next graph, which is trouble sleeping, uh, we can see that the great majority of people are strongly affected by, by this uh, when faced with uh, stressful events. Uh, and about 50% uh, of the people under 25 frequently have feel this way, and most adults say that only sometimes they struggle as well. So following to the next topic, we observed the answers for the loss of appetite, and we concluded that most teenagers and young adults are the ones that tend to lose their appetite the most. Uh, so, and um, moving on to the psychological, uh, symptoms, we studied nervousness, irritability, discontentment, loss of motivation on a daily basis, inner emptiness, apathy, constant sadness, and social isolation. However, just like before, some of these don't show much difference between the two age groups, so we chose the most important ones. Uh, we chose constant sadness. We see that about 20% of the teens and young adults feel the constant sadness, twice the amount of the adults, uh, inner emptiness, inner emptiness. Uh, in this graph, we see that about 20% of the teens and young adults feel inner emptiness, again, twice the amount of the, young, uh, of the adults. Irritability, about 60% of the age group under 25 finds irritability, uh, one of the main signs in stressful events. Loss of motivation, um, as you can see here, there's a difference about 20% between the two age groups. Uh, the group of teens and young adults being the one with the biggest percentage of answers, and nervousness. Lastly, we see that about 70% of the teens and young adults feel affected by nervousness, and about 50% of the adults feel the same way. Uh, and to finalize our analysis, we can clearly see that about 40% of the people under 25 find exhaustion a common sign uh, during stressful situations, while the adults don't feel so affected by this. In conclusion, like we were able to visualize in the graphic showed, uh, different ages react differently to stressful events. Uh, we also realized that most symptoms usually had a higher percentage in age group for, uh, for people under 25. Uh, now you're going to talk about coping mechanisms. A coping mechanism is a strategy that someone uses to help them manage stress or trauma. These mechanisms help people to adjust to stressful situations while helping them maintain their emotional well-being. As you can see in this graph, amongst the uh, 244 answers we received, the most common coping mechanism used was listening to music, 
which was corresponding to about 30% of all answers. And after music, the most common ones are sports and talking to someone, which corresponds to uh, 25% and 20% uh, respectively. After analyzing the most common coping mechanisms of all, amongst all answers, we decided to investigate the difference between the preference of people under 25 versus the people above 25. Uh, we concluded we concluded that sports, talking to someone, and especially listening to music were the most common coping mechanisms among the two age groups. The young adults, however, prefer talking to someone over doing sports, while the adults favor the opposites. We also discovered that most young adults prefer video games or TV series and movies, whereas the adults prefer meditation. So now we're going to the, our goal with our practical experiment, which was to answer our second question, which is discover if stress has an impact on people's skill to on people's performance skills and completing tasks. To do that, just like every group here, we came up with an experiment. And I'm gonna explain what the procedures were or what the experiment was like. So um, first of all, this was our setup. So we would ask people, they came into the room and they sat in front of us on a chair. And first of all, we would ask them a few questions, how old they were, uh, what gender they identify with, and we would assign a participant code to every subject so that we could keep their identity anonymous so that instead of um, uh, connecting their names to the data that we collected, we connected the participant code to use in our analysis. Uh, furthermore, we divided uh, all our subject subjects in two different groups. We had the control group and the experimental group. The experimental group. The experiment was essentially the same between both groups. There was just one single difference. And to explain that difference, I'm going to start by explaining how this experiment worked with the experimental group. So um, we would, uh, first of all, ask the subject to put the headphones on their heads. And then we would um, set up that device right there, the pulse oximeter, on their index fingers, index finger from the non-dominant hand, because they would need the other hand later. <laughs> and then on the tablet, we had a test. But first of all, we would need 30 seconds with the subject completely still, no noise, just really measuring, having the pulse oximeter measuring their vitals. So heart rate and oxygen in their blood in this case. And so after those 30 seconds were over, we would play an audio on the headphones, which was supposed to be, a, it was introduced as a stressor. And this audio was made specifically to try to make that person more nervous, and this is the audio. It's not very pleasant, so if this is too loud, <laughs> we apologize. It's not loud again. Yeah, so basically this is a mix up of a various uh, annoying and stressful sounds and we would play this on the headphones rather loudly <laughs> and the subjects would have to listen to this for 30 seconds staying still still measuring their vitals to see how the heart rate increases just with the noise and then after these 30 seconds would we would hand on the tablet and on the tablet we would have a google forms with a task that task consisted of 10 questions. Uh, all the questions were uh, related to math, but they were rather simple questions. Uh, questions we would say like a fifth grader could answer them. They're a little like, you need to think, but they're not too complicated. And overall, the goal, it was to the subject to answer these questions as fast as possible and submit the form as soon as they're over. Uh, the, we put a limit of two minutes. Some people reached the two minutes, other people could finish in under a minute, which was really impressive, actually. We were not expecting it. And uh, of course, it varied from person to person. Now, our question was, did the stressor that we introduced make any difference? In the control, in the control group, the experiment was exactly the same, except that instead of introducing the noise in the second 30 seconds, we just let the person be with no noise for 60 seconds, and including in the task, they didn't have any noise. So they could focus solely on what they were doing and without having the stressor introduced. Now, um, Nico is going to present to you what, what results we had from this experiment. Uh, so how does the heart rate, heart rate 
varies during the experiments. To answer to this simple uh, question, first we uh, um, we compare if two to two age groups um, are affected by the noise. We have here two graphs, one for adults and the other is for young adults. I know that uh, the graphs are very cute, but uh, let's under uh, let's begin to understand um, what they mean. The red line represents the introduction on to, to the ah, sorry the introduction of the sound in the experimental group, and the green light represents the the beginning of the task. Uh, on the adults, the noise did not didn't affect the, their heart rate. Instead, what stressed them was the task itself. Okay. <laughs> on the other hand, the young adults uh, are affected by the noise. However, the task is a real stress factor. <laughs> Uh, uh, so, as you can see, uh, this graph is show the relationship of the BPMs between adults and young adults and teens. Uh, the teen line is the brown one and the adults is the green one. What we can immediately notice when we look at them is that uh, there's a small difference uh, between the BPMs of, of them. And we were actually curious about this because from what we had searched, uh, the BPMs from 13 years old and so on were equal to the ones of the adults. But what we actually found out is that even though they're similar, there's a small difference. So uh, what we see here uh, is actually normal. So uh, it's not really a thing caused by our experience. And also as Vitor said before, uh, in the experimental, we, we can see a small spike, uh, but it's nothing compared to the spike that the task actually caused. Uh, so uh, the task stressed them, uh, apparently stressed them much more than noise. Uh, so uh, in which way can the time be related to the score uh, of the task? As you can see on these two first plots, uh, the gradient is negative. It means that the test scores tend to decrease over time. So the lowest scores are related to the people who spend more time doing the test. On the teens plot, uh, we can see that they had better scores under stress than without stress. Uh, however, the adults plot, uh, we can notice that the, the opposite happens. Okay, uh, so about the control plot, um, we have noticed that the gradient of under 25 years old is steeper than the gradient of over 25. It means that uh, the influence of time is stronger uh, on the under 25 than on the over 25. And in the experimental uh, graph, uh, this influence of time is even stronger uh, on the under 25 uh, than the over 25. So the conclusion of these practical experiments, we have the controlling the experimental um, graphs or, and we can see that on the first graph, whoop, <laughs> that um, the control uh, group had uh, more. Oh. <laughs> um, they spent more time doing the task than the experimental, and the. Uh, okay, so, so okay, and in the second graph we can see some differences. Uh, the the control group and uh, the, basically it's the opposite. So yeah. Uh, 
Okay, now we're going to discussion. So on the discussion, we wanted to answer our questions. So, and they were, what are the most uh, common coping mechanisms on which, uh, for the stress on if, which ages? And is, yeah, in which stage? Um, with the information that we got from the tests we, we did, uh, we could answer these questions. So, um, the most common uh, coping symptoms for stress uh, for teens and young adults um, were uh, so confusing. <laughs> Yeah. This is the This um oh my god. So yeah, the young adults had more trouble sleeping and uh they reported many then they report no uh normally they report more irritability and yeah all that on the the daily of the, their daily uh and the most coping the most common coping mechanisms uh for both groups were uh, listening to music which is very interesting with the group the our friends group we could see uh many things but for teenagers the um, most preferred coping mechanisms were talking to a friend or something and on the adults, it was to do sports, like physical training and yeah. Uh, so uh, now we must answer our second question, uh, which was how does stress affect our capabil capability to do a specific task? Uh, in our experiment, we were able to see that stress did affect our ability to accomplish a certain task. Um, we found that most adult, adults and youngers get stressed with the noise. However, they get stressed, they get really stressed with the task itself. Uh, some people were able to do the task faster than others, uh, which means that they probably work better under stress. Although our results from the task uh, show that teens and young adults um, dealt better with stress in the exact moments, uh, however, the results from our online survey uh, showed us that uh, adults tend to deal better uh, with stress in long term. This is a very crucial um, topic that, in our opinion, could be more explored. Uh, but with the time that was given to us, uh, we did the best we could. So, thank you for our time. Do you have any questions? No? Yeah. Yeah. So anyone has another question? Okay. Great. So just before we finish, we want to thank everyone. And we want to give a special thanks to Danby for being a great teacher. You made me want to wake up early to go to your morning stretches. <laughs> we want to thank also Paco for helping us with our codes. And we want to especially thank B and Andre because you were really, 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 really the best TAs. B, yeah, you drove us around just so we can do our experiments. Andrea, you set up so late to do the hard codes. So thank you so much. And that's why we have something for you, actually. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All the time at the computer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.